In this video, we're going to step through how to handle a problem in coding competition. The one that we're going to use for an example in this video is from Code Forces. It's called the Matrix Rotation Problem, and it's labeled as Problem 1772B. If you're looking for it, I will also put a link to this problem in the description for this video. So having a quick look here at the problem description, they gave us this little two by two matrix and we were asked to find out if it's possible to rotate the numbers in such a way as to create a beautiful matrix. And they define a beautiful matrix to be one for which the first element of the first row is smaller than the other element in the row. And likewise, in the second row, the first element is smaller than the second element. And also, for each column, the top number has to be smaller than the bottom number. So here you can see some examples of some beautiful matrices. And on the right-hand side, you can see that these matrices are not beautiful. We're also asked if it is possible to take a matrix that is not beautiful and to rotate the numbers as shown here to make it beautiful. And our end goal it, when given a matrix is to determine if the matrix is already beautiful or through some sequence of rotations like this, we can possibly make it beautiful. So as is so often the case, it's worthwhile for you to think about this problem for a minute or two before deciding uh, what to code. And for this problem, I think you will realize that even though it presents itself as a two-dimensional array problem, it's really much better cast as a one-dimensional array problem. For example, we can just take the two-by-two two matrix that you see here on the left and store it in our code as a one-dimensional matrix. And what this will do is it will greatly simplify our code. And then when we go to rotate the matrix, what we can do is go through this matrix rotation as shown here. And when we're all finished, the matrices will rotate like this. Of course, the only ones we're going to keep in our code is the green version. The yellow version is just what it looks like uh, in terms of the way the original problem was stated. So let's get started. I'm going to do this in IntelliJ. I strongly encourage you, if you're doing work for a coding competition, not to use one of the older generation IDEs like BlueJ or some other teaching tool that you may have grown up with in Computer Science A. You want a fairly sophisticated tool that's going to allow you to get a type ahead and other things that will increase the speed of your project development. So we're going to start off by creating a main method. And the main method's main job is going to be to allow us to read in the data either from the keyboard or from a file. And then we're going to run a specific number of trials. If I was to look at this problem right here, for example, you can see that the input file is initially set up with six trials. Uh, that's how many problems we're asked to solve, and this is how, what the output should look like for this particular problem set. So let's go back to our main method here. I'm going to just type in a main method, and we're going to get started with the scanning of the information and putting it into our various variables that we can then manipulate in our program. I'm going to create some variables that can be used to store the information. Okay, what we've put together here is going to be typical of the setup we're going to have for most of our coding competition problems. We're going to define a bunch of variables. This first variable called the line variable, I'm going to use that to read in each line of input from the file or from the keyboard. The tokens is going to be the array after we split the input line into its various fields. Uh, for this particular problem, this array rotation problem, we're going to need to have an array that is of length 4, even though the original problem is cast as a 2 by 2 matrix. As I mentioned, we're going to store our matrix internally as a one-dimensional matrix just to make the code easier. 
and that's the array you see right here. I'm going to use a scanner to scan the keyboard and I'm going to use this integer parse int scan next line line right here that's going to be used to read the number of trials that the problem is asking us to do. In this case that number is six. Let me start off here by mentioning that some of you who are new to competitive programming will be in instead trying to use a different scheme to read this integer you might be tempted to use the next int instead of the next line on your scanner and this is not a good idea and the reason why is that if you use next int instead of next line after you've used the next int to read in this six the cursor is going to remain on that same first line after the six and then when you use the next next line command to scan, it's going to scan an empty string instead of scanning the one three, which is what you're expecting. One easy way to think about this is that in coding competition, you want to avoid using scan.nextint or scan.next double. And you just want to scan everything in one line at a time using the next line and then convert it to what are whatever data type you need. We're going to now set up a loop that's going to go through each of our trials. We now have the loop set up so that we can run the six trials and what we're going to do is we're going to read in information for each trial now. I've written all the code to read in all the information and just wanted to mention one oddity and that is that you can see that on the, when I read the first line of each trial I'm going to set the token that's in the first position to a sub 0 and the next one to a sub 1 but when I read the second line I'm going to reverse the elements and I'm going to put the second token in a sub 2 and the last token into a sub 3 let's look at what this means for our original picture here you can see I'm labeling the items A, B, C, and D like this instead of A, B, and then C, D. And the reason I'm doing this is when we rotate, it'll just be easier for us to do the rotations in our mind and to code it. So now I have to go and write two pieces of code. The one is going to be used to rotate the array and the other is going to be used to check to see if the resulting array is beautiful or not. So let's write the rotation method first. I've written now the rotate method. We could also accomplish this using a loop. If we had a larger array or an array of some unknown size, using the loop would be the only way to go. But here, because our array is relatively small, I've just hard-coded all the rotations. I've also added this call to a print matrix method which we have not yet written and this is going to be useful for us for debugging purposes. We may want to print the array, rotate it, and then print it again just to see if our rotation method is working. Let's go ahead now and write that debugging method called print matrix. Just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, we don't want to take up too much room when we print the matrix, so I'm going to convert this println to a print. That way all the elements will show up on the same line and then we'll print a blank line right afterwards so that if we so that if we print the matrix multiple times, each one will show up on a different line. Of course, when we submit the file for final approval, we're going to have to turn off our calls to the print matrix. We don't want to uh, have extraneous output showing up in our official output. Uh, but for right now, what we'll do is we'll leave this here. We'll leave this here, and the first time we run it, or first couple of times we run it, we'll probably need to have this turned on to see if we've made any mistakes. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to write a method to check to see if the matrix is beautiful or not. So let's go ahead and write that method right now. That's going to be a Boolean method. If you want, you can add some parentheses to make this more clear. But 
what we're doing in this is beautiful method is we're just making sure that A is bigger than B, that D is bigger than C, that A is bigger than D, and that B is bigger than C. And we want to return true if all those conditions are met or false otherwise. And now what we want to do is we want to write another method that's going to do most of the work for us and check to see if the matrix is beautiful. And if it's not, it's going to call this rotate method. Let's take a moment now and just decide how many times we're going to need to check the matrix to see if we can beautify it. I think you'll agree with me that in this particular matrix, this A position or any position here can be in one of four slots. And so we should probably check the original matrix and then do a maximum of three other rotations to see if we can beautify it. So we need to do a, a check of the matrix for a total of four times. So let's write that method now. That's going to be essentially the main workhorse of our code. This is our can be beautiful method. And what it does is it checks to see if the matrix already starts off as beautiful. And if so, it returns true. Otherwise, it does a maximum of three rotations. Each time it rotates the matrix, it checks to see if the resulting matrix is beautiful or not. And if so, it returns true. If all four of those checks fail, then it returns a false, indicating that the matrix cannot be made beautiful. The last thing we have to do is call this method can be beautiful in our main method. So we've got our code all written now. And the only thing that uh, is left for us to do is to run it and try it out. To do that, I'm going to first go back to the original problem statement. And I'm going to go ahead and copy all this uh, into the clipboard and that's going to help us run it and then we're going to come over here and we're going to run this main method and I'm simply going to paste in the clipboard now to run the files and here I have to do a control V and you can see that we're starting to get some input here it looks like the first matrix is beautiful even before any rotations second one we need to do some rotations uh, we're going to now uh, turn off the calls to the print matrix just so that the only output that appears is the official output. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my code here and comment out this call. And now I'm going to run the program one more time. And once again, I'm going to paste in that same clipboard I had before. And you can see we're starting to get some data here. And it uh, looks like we've got yes, yes, no, yes, yes, no are the answers. Let's see if the official program statement has those answers. Yes, yes, no, yes, yes, no. So I think we're in a position now to submit the file. We're going to go ahead and submit this file now. So to do that, we're going to hit this Choose File button. And right now, it happens to be pointing to a different problem I'm working on. So let's go over and find the right problem. And we're going to go to the source file and find our main code and submit it. And we're going to hit this submit button. And if everything has gone right after you've submitted the file, you should get an accepted verdict like the one shown here. And if you want additional details, you can go further down and click on this. And it will show you what was expected and what you gave. This is more useful if something goes wrong. And here you can also see the larger list of trials that was used to test your code. And you can drill down in here and see which one yours failed on if you need to do additional debugging.